In this morning's High on Money, what house hunters should expect this home buying season. Median home prices are up, especially for existing homes, which have soared nearly 16% since February 2020. But inventory is way down, dropping almost 30% from a year ago. And mortgage rates, while near historic lows, have inched up to just over 3% for a 30-year fixed loan. CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger joins us now. Jill, good morning. So if new and existing home sales were down last month, why are prices still so high? Well, they were down last month, and I know that that was a little bit of a shock, but year over year, meaning if we wind the clock back to February of 2020, activity's up by 8 or 9 percent, depending whether it's an existing or a new home. And the real critical issue that has plagued the housing market is a lack of supply. As you said, down nearly 30 percent for existing homes. Some economists believe that's even understating the problem. So when you have a ton of people coming into the market, market, a limited supply, prices are indeed higher. And, you know, all that limited supply, Anthony, also exacerbated by the fact that some boomers didn't want to list their homes in the middle of a pandemic. And when you look to new homes, unfortunately, the price in new homes is also rising, not only because of a lack of supply, but the actual cost of the materials, whether it's crude oil that's used in paint, it could be copper used in the lines. So all put together, prices are indeed higher and a lot higher for many would-be buyers. Still, a lot of people relocated because of the pandemic. How, what's the long-term impact going to be on the housing market of that, do you think? Well, I think that it really depends. You know, a lot of people were at home, whether they were working at home because their companies put them home or because they were home with their kids. They looked around. They wanted space. Now, here we are at hopefully the end of the pandemic with kids going back to school. Now the question really becomes, what will happen? And I think that the move that we've seen is from the big cities to sprawling suburbs. Now we're looking at smaller cities. Cities. It could be Austin, Charlotte, Nashville, and some of these even smaller cities are providing cash incentives to get you to move. There are websites that will in hook up buyers with these incentives and fascinating places like Baltimore, right outside D.C., yeah. you can get $5,000 towards the purchase of a new home there. Uh, how do you know what you can afford in this market, Jill? It's so boring when I say this, but it's <laughs> run the numbers. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sorry to say that because it's still the case. Look, there's principal, there's interest, there's your homeowner's insurance, there's your taxes. Don't forget, every homeowner will tell you, don't forget to add in the maintenance. One to three percent of that purchase price has to go in there. And you've got to make sure that you account for these factors and make sure you're not going to preclude yourself from achieving other financial goals. Maybe that's paying down your student loan debt. Maybe actually it could be that you would need to be saving more for retirement. So weigh those factors. All good advice, Jill Schlesinger. Thank you very much.